Yeah, good morning, uh, Terrellin. Well, it's the first trading day of June, and definitely I was thinking about uh, minimum wage, you know, at this time, an industrial action was first trading day. Let's get to um, some of the top stories that set your agenda today. Uh, we're seeing oil prices are down um, early trade today, despite a move by producer um, group OPEC Plus to extend deep output cuts well into 2025. We'll see uh, Brent not reacting positively um, to that news there, 0.3 percent um, down. That's what we're seeing for Brent uh, this morning. WTI moving farther away from that $80 mark, $76.80, down about 0.2 um, percent. Let's get a check on the um, FX market now. We're seeing uh, the close for um, Friday there. Action, you know, as usual, but not that much volatility. Um, NAFM. Uh, that's uh, that's Enfim, 1,485 naira. That was a close on Friday. Nafex, 1,495, 3.93%. Uh, uh, so definitely, uh, we, we did see you know some volatility in that market, but transactions uh, were about 200 million um, dollars. Spot transactions were completed within about 1,174 and uh, 1,550 range. So that's what we had uh, for Friday in the FX uh, market. To some company news now, listed uh, energy giants, Gericko Power Pills has signed a partnership with um, German multinational technology conglomerate uh, Siemens Energy to expand the capacity of the indigenous uh, power company. In a statement sent to the Nigerian Exchange Limited, Gericko says the MOU, which was signed in Berlin, aims to ensure sustainable, uh, resilient and efficient power generation while safeguarding the longevity of assets, and this is all aimed at supporting the growth and sustainability of the Nigeria electricity supply industry. The chairman of the board of directors of Girgu Power PLC, Mr. Femi Tedala, led the Nigerian um, company's team, while the managing director for the Middle East and Africa, Mr. Dietmar uh, Sesdorfer, led the Siemens Energy team. And International Air Transport Association has confirmed that the Central Bank of Nigeria has cleared foreign airlines trap funds worth $831 million um, from June last year uh, to date. The Geneva, Switzerland-based IATA said the um, development had brought international airlines trap funds globally to about $1.8 billion. Um, that's according to IATA. From the peak of about $850 million foreign airlines funds in Nigeria. That was uh, last June. Only $19 million left to outstanding. Uh, future of uh, Nigeria's um, oil and gas is also on the burner, you know, at this time. And that's been brewing right now as divestments and takeovers by indigenous um, oil players, you know, continue at this time. Well, we see the Harvard Business School Association of Nigeria highlighted these issues in a recent uh, meeting of stakeholders. That was uh, last week. Let's uh, take a listen. industry has a significant impact on Nigeria. It's part of our history. It will continue being part of our history. It drives a lot of things. Whether when the forest goes up or down, oil industry is involved. If there are fuel queues, if there are diesel queues. So oil affects our lives in more ways than one. But slumbages used to train all of us, both slumbages staff and staff of the operating companies. We were able to set up with these companies we set up because Shell trained them and we took people from Shell to come and set up. Now all of those people we used to start up the businesses are the ones they are calling dinosaurs. And the people who were training, Swamiri and Shell, stopped training 15 years ago. That's why the middle is empty. We have to take the baton from there. Because all of us now know, once all the people we brought in to set up these businesses 12, 13 years ago are hitting 60 and retiring, we have to worry about the pipeline, the human resource pipeline. And you can only really invest in it when your business depends on it. So it won't be an all-commerce affair. The few who are doing well among the IPPG companies, who now know that the future of their business depends on it, they will invest on it and they will solve the problem. They will have to. And a standoff between the federal government and labor still on with the Nigerian uh, government insisting the minimum wage demand uh, of labor was uh, quite unrealistic. And the government's offering a um, 100% increase on the existing minimum wage. And they're saying that should be accepted at this time. Well, joining us to weigh on the matter is Mr. Dewale uh, Smash, 
uh, we are the Director General of NECA. Uh, joining me uh, from Geneva, great to have you on the show. Good morning, and thank you for having us. Good morning, and um, it seems the the trap attack committee is not making headway. You know, at this time, no consensus yet on national minimum wage, and now industrial action is upon us. How are you seeing all of this? Well, it's quite unfortunate that we we get to this and find ourselves in this situation once again. You know, in the last um. One year, probably we've had over three or four different um, calls for strikes and industrial actions, which up to us has become very worrisome. But in this instance of the work of the Tripartite Committee on the National Minimum Wage, I think it's very important that we understand the context of these old issues because there seems to be a lot of misinformation that is going, um, that is peddled out there. So while we are not, it's very important to say this also, we are not um, an affiliate of the organized um, organized labor. Uh, we are not also a government parastatal. You know, we are a body of respected, legally formed and uh, responsible businesses in Nigeria. So, so I, I, having said that, you know, the Trapatite Committee, as the name connotes, comprises three distinct organizations or bodies. One representing the workers, which is NRTUC, NECA, and the organized private sector comprising manufacturers, Association of Nigeria, National Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry Man, and Culture, NASIMA, National Association of Small and Medium Scale Enterprises, NASME, and NASI, National Association of Small Scale Industries comprising the private sector, and then government. It is a tripartite structure that is supposed to meet consultatively and then make recommendation of a new wage, a new minimum wage to the president, who has the constitutional rights, the role to either approve that figure or disapprove that figure, and then pass his approval within the context of a bill to the National Assembly to take the legislative action that is necessary before it, it comes into law. Now, what we are meant to recommend is a national minimum wage. It's very important to, 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 to address that. The minimum wage below which no organization, either in the private or public sector, should pay the wage ordinarily for the most vulnerable worker. It is not, the process is not to set a general wage increase. It is not. There has been conversations about living wage or there's no living wage. This particular committee that we have, it's set up to come up with recommendations for a new minimum wage. And what has transpired in the committee is, has, been, has been conversations, some call it negotiations, consultation, as is necessary. So it is not impossible that the three parties will not agree. It is not impossible that our interests will differ. But the most important thing is we have to find a balance between the key components, the key, key critical ingredients before we arrive or make recommendation. And this is the macroeconomic dynamics that we currently face looking at also the needs of workers and their families, looking at um, inflation rates, um, exchange rates, um, um, interest rates, looking at the sustainability and ability of businesses to pay. You, know, you have to bring all those together okay. to arrive at a minimum wage. It's very important to, to espouse this. Minimum wage, below right. which nobody should pay. Okay, yeah, well, well, definitely, you know, at this point, um, looking at the macro headwinds at this time, uh, we can agree that it, it's not the fault, you know, of the vulnerable, the vulnerable citizens that we're, where we are with uh, inflation and, um, you know, GDP and all of that. Because if we look at the historical data now, um, 5,500, year 2000, that's, you know, the minimum wage, that we had um, 18,000 in 2011, 2019, 30,000 naira, they will now have the wage, you know, award. But let's look at how 
prices, you know, prices of you know, important commodities have gone up. Let's look at um, fuel now, um, for instance. We've seen fuel, that's up over 100%, you know, at this time. In one year, if we look at the price of fuel, 238 naira, that was uh, one year ago. 701 naira, depending on where you're buying it from, 194% rise, that's for petrol. We're seeing food inflation at 40.54%. So definitely, it, it, it's looking like labor and you know vulnerable um, citizens are just getting the wrong end of the stick you know at this point when you look at you know businesses increasing the prices of their goods and services at this time but wage minimum wage stays sticky thank you for your analysis which is quite interesting now what you didn't had basically is the interest rate how does inflate rates affect an average business? How does the forex rate, the exchange rate, how does it affect an average business? How does the cost of fuel, petrol, how does it impinge on the logistic business of organized businesses? How does all these issues affect organized businesses? We've not mentioned the issue of forex. How does it affect the business itself? Because one thing we cannot, we cannot run away from is that as the issue, the macroeconomic conditions is affecting workers, is twice affecting the organized businesses. And without the business survivor, you know, there cannot be jobs. So you have to find a balance in all the macroeconomic issues. The organized businesses doesn't create the macroeconomic issues. The workers doesn't create the macroeconomic issues. But we are forced, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are circumstantially, we are meant to operate within the context of the macroeconomic issues. So if you increase wage, and that's why I talk about balance, if you increase the minimum wage, we're talking of the minimum wage now, the least, the minimum below which nobody should pay. There are businesses that are paying more, more than the 30,000 that you mentioned. There are businesses that are paying far, far, far above the 30,000 because they, are, they, can, they can afford it. But predominantly, many organized businesses have faced perilous times in recent times. It also interests you. And this is in the public space. In the last in the last one year, many businesses that I want to mention their names, they declared humongous losses, which has compromised their ability to also pay the current minimum wage and also protect jobs. So you must our view is this, and if it's a very strong view that we hold, that in the current circumstances where the, the variables are not favorable to all of us, what should be our key objective? And for us, one of the key objectives is that you must protect jobs. Because if organized businesses continue to suffer the, the current situation, look, there's no way we can protect jobs. That is the, the basic reality of it. There's no way businesses can remain sustainable when their affordability becomes in question. Okay, so, let, let's, going on, on strike. Yeah, yeah, just one one moment there. You know, uh, talking about uh, what will happen to you know private sector at this time. Just paint a picture, you know, for me of what will happen if we get this 494k minimum wage if that gets approved what will happen to the private sector now we have created we will have created a big problem but the committee will have set up the nation for a major crisis and this is how it's going to happen once for the, by the, the thirty thousand, the current thirty thousand, you have many states and local government that are still struggling to pay thirty thousand. now the capacity and ability of organized businesses to pay even what we have offered, what we have proposed, a 100% increase, the ability to pay is also compromised. A 400 and, a 400 and, um, four, let's say 400, 400 naira, 400,000 minimum wage. We have a negative spiral effect beyond the issue of, um, of, of cost puts inflation. It will also lead to the close down of many businesses. And that's the reality. It's, it's, not, it's not a threat. It is already happening. Businesses are living in groups. Nigerians, your brothers, my brothers, they are losing their jobs in droves. Those are not things that will happen. They are things that are currently happening. So the consequences, the consequences of our arriving or making proposals of figures that are that are unsustainable, you know, we just we, we just will have created serious problems for ourselves after the committee was have finished its recommendation. And that is our concern. All right, what would you say is the right number at this time for minimum wage, national minimum wage, for the most vulnerable? 
we have offered 60,000, a hundred percent increase from the current 30,000. And we believe strongly because in the private sector, there is the instrument of collective bargaining that goes on at the sectoral levels, where some industries, some sectors, collective bargaining is held every year, where wages are increased, terms and conditions of, um, of welfare, they are increased on a yearly basis. In some industries, they meet to collectively bargain every two years, where wages are increased, cost of living are adjusted. In some industries, three years. So our view is this. Serious factors like productivity, factors like competence, should be the factors that we drive up and influence wage increase. What we have agreed, or what we are, what we are, what we are, what we are to recommend at the community level, is what some have called the floor wage. The floor wage below which nobody should pay. So people can negotiate and increase the wages proportionately within the context of their ability to pay, industry-wise. But to say, uh, to agree on a figure, you know, that is that we compromise the existence of organized businesses. And, 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 and make a serious mess of, 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 um, of businesses beyond what they currently face is what we are currently against. At this time, you know, we're still seeing uh, some multinationals announce um, exit, you know, from the Nigerian market um, at this time. And definitely that's going to play into um, jobs. What's your outlook, you know, for the jobs market in 2024 and, and, and beyond in Nigeria? You know, it, 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 it's, 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 I must say it's, it's quite disheartening that in the whole conversation, you know, the, the reality of job losses, you know, the reality of, of, of businesses closing down. The Manufacturers Association, about a few months ago, said over 700 companies, manufacturing, SMEs, they've closed shop. When they close shop, we think they're just statistics. Those businesses, they employ Nigerians. We're not asking where are those Nigerians. The, man, the multinationals that are living, we are not asking where are the Nigerians that are working for them. And if a multinational should leave, all the businesses supplying the manufacturer inputs, but they are businesses in the value chain, they, they also face the risk of closure. Where are the people working in those businesses? We are, we are not, we are not, we are not, we are not giving due attention to those individuals. So the outlook is very green, is 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 very scary, and. Um, Circumstantially, if we continue in this path uh, and reason did not prevail, you know, we just would drive ourselves deeper into the mud. Deeper right. into the unemployment mode. All right, definitely. We hope uh, we, we reach some kind of agreement that favors every party, you know, at this time. Thank you so much. It was great having your perspective, Mr. Dewale Smart. Uh, you're the Director General for NACA. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, now let's get some breaking news now. Reaching out, see the Central Bank of Nigeria has revoked the banking license of Heritage Bank PLC in accordance with its mandate to promote a sound financial system in Nigeria and in exercise its powers under Section 12 of the banks and other financial acts as uh, Bofia 2020, uh, according to the statement by the Acting Director uh, Corporate uh, Communications. This action has become necessary because the board and management of the bank have not been able to improve the bank's financial performance, a situation which constitutes a threat to financial stability. So that's it. Uh, breaking news right here. CBN has revoked the banking license of uh, Heritage Bank. Well, let's um, look at uh, trading uh, for May now and see what to expect in the month of June. Join us now is Mukta uh, Mohammed, CEO of Finance with uh, Mukta. Joining me via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Thank you, Ladi. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Right. So I, I hope the industrial action is not impacting trades today. Is it? No, not at all. We are a private sector driven the economy. Yeah, the we, we can work remotely and just get the system on. Fine. Okay, let's look at uh, the month of May now. We had three negative closes uh, for about three weeks, but we had just that one positive close, and it turns out May turned out positive. How are you seeing that? Well, Ladi, this negative closure are largely driven by its um, perception, especially if you look at those negative closures coming from the banking space where investors still had lost about what will happen in terms of recapitalization. Uh, we are beginning to get clear um, direction on that of recent uh, where some banks during their AGM have come up with a clear cost strategy. So we might be seeing the uh, right issues. Now, what investors are really concerned about is the price of these right issues. Are they going to be buying at a discount? 
and um, what is um, what is that discount like and when will this right issue will be a one-off right issue um, if you listen to the chairman of UBA saying that uh, you may have a right issue now then you have a second one uh, when the interim dividend is paid and you may have a final one when the final dividend is paid so um, other uh, banks have not come up with any clear cut um, decision so that seems to be what is affecting investors at the moment investor sentiment is a uh, a little bit um, low and then when you look at other sector of the, of the market you've not gotten any good news uh, in terms of the manufacturing sector in terms of the conglomerate in terms of the food and privacy sector the results have not been commiserate with um, what investors are expecting so definitely those negative sentiment will continue to drag down the market but again it also offer entry point for designing investors, especially value chain investors who come into the market and take opportunity to buy some of these stocks at a good rate. Right, and definitely we can't we can look away from the industrial action at this time and the issue of minimum wage in Nigeria. Talk to me about that number, about 400,000 naira minimum wage. How would that impact listed companies on the NGX? I think that one is very unrealistic. Um, we know it's unrealistic, but again, and the government have not shown seriousness in also negotiating with labor. If you listen to what labor seems to say, they come up with their numbers based on figure, but the government just tend to punish numbers at them. Ordinarily, the national minimum will be commensurate with inflation average um, rate. That's what is done globally. But unfortunately, if you look at what the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics is giving to Nigeria and by and by, what we, we, we see in the market in terms of inflation, you realize it's a price different. When you go to the market, it's like 100%. When you come to the Nigerian Bureau, it's telling you food inflation is about 40%. And so they've not been able to match that together. But I think uh, 497,000 uh, is, uh, is not realistic. I don't think any company is actually listed in the index. Just like um, your guest said before, uh, before I came up, uh, there are a lot of challenges that most of these companies are going, going to, especially those companies that are exposed to FX. And so sometimes when you begin to throw these numbers around, uh, you don't also look at the larger picture of in terms of companies team to satisfy their shareholders by downsizing, whether I call it right sizing or downsizing, might just be what will play up in the long run. So we must be careful. But I think... Um, Government have no so seriousness because if it's easy for you to say um, subsidy gone, it should. Do. I mean, almost a year you've been negotiating a minimum wage, and then you these are public servants. They see some of the numbers that some of these political appointees in terms of um, uh, um, funds that are moving their hand within them, and also again a government that is battling minimum wage, saying that oh the economy will crumble if we have to pay. Then here you are, a government and giving about ninety billion naira for actual operation. All these. Things sometimes add, add up to when you see um, labor organization demanding for high wages. I think um, about 497,000, uh, I don't think is realistic. But I guess maybe that's why yeah, we see labor asking for that amount. When you see some of the things the federal government you know, spending on uh, you know, at, at this time. But let's look at the breaking news we got um, this morning. Uh, CBN revoking the banking license of... Uh, Heritage Bank. That, that's a big move right there in the banking industry. How are you seeing that? Well, I think it, it has been expected for a while. Now, I remember the, like two or three years ago, the foreman, um, that then the then CBN governor came to debunk it, that, um, that said the bank was going into crisis. That's a bank that had been showing a lot of controversy. If you remember that the chairman of that bank also was removed some time ago, and I think the bank had not really come out of his wood. Um, but the good thing is that TBN is intervening. Uh, we will get more information on what these interventions are. Because sometimes when this intervention comes into play, sometimes the more you see, the less you understand. And um, there are all, the good thing about uh, the Heritage Bank thing, um, Ladi, is that uh, it's not listed in the uh, stock exchange. Right. So um, investors will not suffer losses like they would normal suffer, normally suffer when and licenses are revoked because um, the CBN will say we are only interested in customers and once you invest all your money has gone down the tree. Luckily, we are not seeing that and think that is good news for investors, or news for investors. But um, for, for, for the banking space, uh, after CBN have told us time and time again that the, the, the financial state is very stable, to get the news like this, that means um, international investors will be taking will not be taking the CPM serious sometime when they make some of those um, pronouncements.
All right, so what, what are you seeing for, uh, for the month of June? This last um, trading week for May, we didn't see positive sentiment. Is that going to filter into June? Well, a lot of June is always a month that is neither here nor there in the, in the FX market because at that time, investors are putting their eyes waiting for the third quarter result, I mean, half-year results, especially from the banking space, and also some other um, big conglomerate that pay interim dividends. So the month of June has always been wait and see what happens when those results come in. Um, so it's, uh, it's slow, but the, what normally happens in the month of June very much is we see investors um, looking at bargain hunting in terms of price, um, price um, movement and then looking at opportunities to take advantage, especially knowing fully well that there will be interim dividend payment in half year. And remember, when you are going through a down economy like what we are going through now, cash become kings and so investors begin to peel towards um, um, stocks that are paying um, interim dividend. But again, as it stands now, most of those stocks that are paying interim dividend inter inter seems to be averaging in terms of their um, bottom-up uh, approach. Uh, they seem to be average at a, at a particular um, um, price. Access Bank opening 17, UBA doing 22, um, 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 Zenith Bank doing 33, then um, GTB 39, um, GTCO 39, so you see those um, stocks, those companies still within that space. And the only bank they are paying to the that seems to have moved is uh, Fidelity Bank, which is doing almost 10 naira, almost above 10 naira. So outside of that, uh, you keep on seeing investors looking for good entry positions in those, um, those equity. But most investors normally key in there when those number comes in. Sometimes those number comes in that in pricing, Sometimes this number comes in, you see a little gradual movement, and sometimes these numbers might just come in and you see that um, the price will still remain where it is. So investors in the month of June right. are always doing wait and see. Right, wait and see uh, at this point, and definitely we'll see how the market closes today. We'll see if industrial action uh, managed to shape investor confident, uh, confidence in the equities market. That's for today. Thank you so much. It was great to have your perspective, Mokhtar Mohammed, CEO of uh, Finance with Mokhtar. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Ladi. All right, that's it from me on Business Morning. We'll definitely get you today's close later uh, with a summary. It's back to the Sunrise Daily Team.